This weekend, the Cerebral Palsy Alliance is hosting the retreat fundraising event here in Melbourne. And joining me now is Dr. Madison Payton, Senior Research Fellow at the Cerebral Palsy Alliance Research Institute. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. T tell me more about the work that you're doing at uh, the Cerebral Palsy Alliance Research Institute. So at our Cerebral Palsy Alliance Research Institute, we're a group of more than 40 scientists, researchers, disability experts and clinicians. And we're all working towards a common goal of trying to um, go after the big challenges set out by our community. And um, as you just mentioned, cerebral palsy is the most common physical disability in childhood. And it's, it's a highly complex condition that affects people in very different ways. And it's all because of damage to the developing brain. And so we really need new treatments and new innovations in the space. And the exciting part is that we are seeing change in the latest uh, decades, we've now seen a reduction in the rate of cerebral palsy by 40%. So we want to keep doing more. That is fantastic. And the reason why events like this weekend in Melbourne, and that's why I'm in Melbourne this weekend, is for the retreat to raise funds. The gap between government funding and benevolence is huge. We always say it. So every cent raised helps Absolutely. Like, as you said, we really get most of our funds from philanthropy and so it's incredibly important that we talk about the cause and events like the retreat this weekend. We're, we're sponsored by Toyota and the media industry, which has been incredible. And we're trying to get those really important funds to drive essential research, but also services and really cool work that we're doing in accelerator work for technology and also for um, diagnosing babies at risk. You mentioned how much things have improved. Uh... I have a nephew, he turns 19 in February, lives here in Melbourne. He's profoundly affected by cerebral palsy in the wheelchair, but I look at his life and it's music and it's the aquatics and it's horse riding for the disabled, that, that liberates him. Uh, but he would be in a very different position if he was born tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. I was just talking to a colleague the other day and they were saying that back in 2005, which is when the Research Institute was founded, there really just wasn't any research going on. So the fact that we've been able to, I guess, shine a light on this important area has, has moved so many people into this field, researchers like myself, mm. but also we're talking about it more and we're seeing severity go down in cerebral palsy. So it means like people like me can innovate and drive new treatments and hopefully raise funds for essential human research as well. And it allows colleagues of yours like Dr Nadia Badwadi to, to identify early and that's, that can be everything, can't it? Absolutely. And as you said, I, I think that reduction in the rate by 40% is really driven by the fact we've been able to collaborate and really care for pregnant mothers and their babies just that little bit better in the early stages of life and then all the way through those critical parts of development. Now we've come through September. We're a month and a bit on from September, which is a yep. fantastic initiative because it gets us, us all moving, trying to yep. get our 10,000 steps. But it went well again. Oh, it went so well. September is our biggest community fundraiser. We had more than 100,000 participants this year, which is phenomenal. Phenomenal. and we've raised more than eight million dollars so yeah thank you for the support there and as I said the the critical funds here are halved into research and then also services for those with cerebral palsy it's great to see someone so passionate I love your passion thank and you. it's genuine isn't it yeah you, I love you, it. you love what you do and you love seeing the impact absolutely because we can see real change and I feel like I'm working in a space now where you can be really creative and I'm, I'm a stem cell scientist so we are seeing this next generation of new treatments hopefully coming to Australia really soon and a little birdie told me yesterday you won an award yesterday did, I did. did you tell me about that come yes. on I know you're modest <laughs> it was the Australasian stem cell society rising star award and it was for early leadership in my fields so I'm very proud to receive yeah that well award. congratulations because it's, it's not five days a week, nine to five, is it? It's, 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 it's a lifestyle, yeah. your job. Yeah, it is. I'm so passionate. As you said, I think half of it is raising awareness. It is the most common physical disability of childhood, but I still think a lot of people don't really know what cerebral palsy is. So I think if they did know, um, they would be doing a lot more and there's so much more we can be doing, particularly in fundraising. Just finally, how important is it for able-bodied people to understand and try to understand those that are affected by things like cerebral palsy? Oh, it's so important because we can't do anything as individuals and we've got to collaborate and we're living in a world that is so diverse and it includes people with disability. So we're all in it together and we've got to do better for everyone. Absolutely. You've nailed it this morning, <laughs> as you always do. Dr. Madison Payton, thank you so much. Appreciate it.